In the second unit, we're going to talk about another regularization strategy, which is called early stopping. It's very effective. It's very simple. It's computationally very efficient, and it's used almost always in deep learning. If we look at the training and the validation loss over epochs, or iterations during training. Epoch is basically when um, we have iterated one complete time over the entire data set. This is what we call an epoch, right? An iteration is a single mini batch. And then if we have completed all mini batches of the data set, then this is called what we call one epoch. And then we do multiple of these epochs until the training error goes down. Right? So we see how the training error, this is the negative log likelihood loss here, um, continuously approaches uh, smaller and smaller values. However, what we also observe is that while the training error decreases over time, the validation error starts increasing again. Here we see the validation error. Um, you can see that while it in initially decreases um, very rapidly and then a little bit further, it starts increasing again at some point. You can see this upward slope of this green curve here. This is a figure that I've taken from the uh, Goodfellow book. Um, so of course, we are interested in the best generalization performance, which is can be, which we approximate using the validation error. And therefore, we do not want to train um, forever because in many cases, the validation error increases. We wanna, what we want to do is we want to train for some time until the validation error increases and then return the parameters with the lowest validation error. So we want to basically store all these intermediate results such that we can come back to uh, the best result after training has completed. And that's called early stopping. We're not waiting until the training error becomes arbitrarily small, but we're stopping um, training at an earlier point in time when the validation error hasn't decreased for a while beyond the best value that we had observed so far. Of course, during training, we need to, um, at every epoch or how often we want to do it, we need to evaluate on the validation set. So we need to run a forward pass on the validation set that we have held out. That's not part of the training set in order to compute this number. This simple early stop stopping strategy has an analogy to L2 regularization. In fact, under some assumptions, both are actually equivalent. So here on the left, we can see an illustration of what early stopping does. So we can see um, the parameter trajectory. In this case, we assume it's, you know, it's parameters are initialized to zero, which is not possible. So it's like something close to zero with some noise. But this dash trajectory is then the trajectory that takes uh, us via SGD, via gradient descent, um, closer to um, the solution of the unregularized objective in this case, or of the objective in this case. There is only one objective, which is an unregularized objective. Of course, you can also combine this strategy with the regularization strategy. But in this case, it's the unregularized objective. Now, the trajectory stops, in this case, at W um, tilde before actually reaching the minimum W star, because this is the point where the training error becomes very small. But this is the point where we have determined that the validation error starts increasing again. So we effectively stop here. As we've seen before, in L2 regularization, we have this competition of the regularized and the unregularized objective um, here in red and in green. 
where the penalty, this regularizer forces the minimum of the regularized loss w tilde to be closer to the origin than w star, the minimum of the unregularized objective. So as you can see, both of these regularization strategies have a very similar effect. And in fact, under some assumptions, both are actually equivalent. Um, to see this, I um, recommend to have a look at chapter 7.8 of the deep learning textbook. So here's a summary of the simple early stopping strategy. It's the most commonly used form of regularization in deep learning. It's very effective, simple, and computationally efficient. And that's also one reason of, for its uh, popularity. In uh, early stopping, the training time, the number of iterations or the number of epochs can be viewed as a hyperparameter. So we have a model selection pro problem over this hyperparameter. But what's quite unique about the early stopping approach is that it's super efficient as it requires only a single training run to test all hyperparameters because at every iteration, whenever we benchmark, whenever we evaluate on the validation set, we obtain the validation error. We just need a single training run. This is unlike all the other hyperparameters. So for instance, um, in weight decay, where we have this alpha, we need to, in order to cross validate, we need to train the model again and again for different alpha values to determine the best alpha value. This is not the case for early stopping. So it's very efficient. The only cost that is incurred is that we need to periodically evaluate the validation error on the validation set, right? But it's something that's very common in machine learning. It's the first thing you should do. You should always do this. You should look at your tensor board or whatever you use to monitor performance and look at the validation error and see if, if it starts increasing again. It's not true for all problems. If you have an abundance of data and for some problems, even you know the test error continues decreasing for days and weeks of training time. But if you have a small amount of data um, compared to the model complexity and for many problems, it's actually true that we have this behavior that the validation error starts increasing actually quite soon. Now, um, this additional cost um, that is incurred by this additional forward pass in the validation set can be reduced by making the validation set smaller than the training set, which is typically done. So this forward pass doesn't, doesn't matter or evaluating less frequently. So for instance, evaluating only after every epoch where we have done maybe thousand iterations in between. So it's really this additional cost doesn't matter compared to all these forward and backward passes that we have done in between. A little remark, if little training data is available, one can perform also a second training phase to take advantage of this held out um, validation set that refused to evaluate the validation error. So what we would do then is basically we would um, do a first run to see how many steps are needed, how many iterations or how many epochs are needed, and then run a second training phase from scratch again, where we initialize the parameters from scratch again, where the model is then retrained on all the training data, including the validation set, using the same number of training iterations um, that are determined by the early stopping procedure. Of course, then we have to conduct two training runs. And this is only worth if we really have little data so that this validation data is actually needed to get good performance on the benchmark that we consider.